fan and now has the unique honor of bringing fans their first look at the High Republic era in live action with the brand new Star Wars series, The Acolyte. Here to talk about it is executive producer, Leslie Headland. That was a catwalk. That was fashion show worthy. Yeah, I just try to treat everything as if we're on RuPaul's Drag Race. That's kind of like my... That's a, just, yeah. just work the runway, work the runway. You, you worked that runway? I thought, what a tough act to follow. Jon Favreau just discovered our gatekeeper and was marveling at being on Navarro again. And then, here you come. <laughs> and you did it. You did it. You, you understood the assignment. Leslie, so good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much. Now, I'm a big fan of The High Republic. I know you're a big fan of Star Wars The High Republic, but you're the first person to take a stab at bringing The High Republic to life in live action with your show, The Acolyte. What's that been like for you? Well, it's so exciting. I mean, as somebody that grew up both with, you know, obviously George's films and then the release of the special editions, like for a long period of time, if you're, I mean, I'm not going to age myself, but <laughs> the, you know, the extended universe and, and a lot of that publishing was really the only Star Wars that I had. And so what I love about the High Republic is that it's, kind of in the grand tradition of what Star Wars was for the fans for a really long time, which is, you know, both these kind of high concept, beautifully rendered stories, but at the same time, pulpy action and the kind of stuff that, that we always love and, and adore about Star Wars in the live action. So I wanted to, to get to, ha to have the opportunity to bring both of those things together was so, so exciting to me. So from a narrative standpoint, point that was the case, but I have to also say I really loved the challenge of marrying the, um, uh, the aesthetics of what has already been designed for the High Republic and what the Jedi look like in the High Republic and bridging that gap between who they are then and who they are when we meet them in The Phantom Menace. So that was also very exciting. Awesome. Awesome. Great answer. And this is your first Star Wars celebration, and I believe yesterday you were part of the studio showcase and you got brought to stage by a Wookiee Jedi. I did. I did. I, I did get brought on stage by a character I created, a uh, Wookiee Jedi Master named Kelnaka, played by Jonas. We all know and love. Um, I couldn't pass up the idea of having a Wookiee Jedi in live action. I just like, as soon as it was established in the High Republic that that was a thing that could happen, I was like, get it in here. Let's go. Action. Yes, please. We love Wookiees, we love Jedi. You know we're gonna love a Wookiee Jedi. It seems kind of like inevitable, honestly, but yes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know something about the Star Wars timeline. The High Republic is so far removed from most of the Star Wars we know. I know you talked about the, that connective tissue of the design elements evolving from where your story is to when we get to The Phantom Menace, but what's different about this era that will surprise fans who maybe haven't discovered The High Republic yet? Maybe they aren't into the books and comics just yet. Maybe this is their first step into if that larger world. If this were your first step, I, and I hope, you know, if it were, I hope that I do the fans proud because it is such a beautiful, rich, gorgeous world that people should be um, investing into as fans, especially like, um, again, as a fan myself that grew up with a lot of publishing as opposed to media, because we just didn't have any media the way that we do now. Um, I hope that if you watch The Acolyte, it does inspire you to get further into The High Republic, and the publishing phase one was incredible. I, I think it was just astonishing. I think that one of the things that 
would be helpful to kind of put in perspective is that we're at the end of that era and moving more into George's era of the, uh, the Phantom Menace. So my question became as a fan, um, when I initially pitched the show to Kathleen, which was an original idea with new characters and not connecting it to Skywalker Saga or any of the existing characters in the High Republic, what I wanted in to introduce the fans to the concept too was how do you reconcile the Jedi at the height of their power, the galaxy at the height of this age of enlightenment and peace, and who George says they become at the top of the Phantom Menace. And to me, that meant, why don't you tell a story about Star Wars from the perspective of the villains, of the bad guys? And if those bad guys are outnumbered at this point, then that means that you get this opportunity to see how the Jedi very subtly go from who they were in the High Republic and the Old Republic and who they became by the time you're watching episodes one, two, and three. That's awesome. And I can tell from the way you referred to phase one that you are a big Star Wars The High Republic publishing fan. I can tell. Are we, do we have any other Star Wars The High Republic fans in the house? Who are also very excited for the Acolyte? I just have to say, I, it is such an honor to be here. <laughs> like, Star Wars saved my life. Like, like I know that we... Even it, the, the truth is, like we are so spoiled now with Star Wars media. I, I know that I, I know that it can feel sometimes like, well, I like this thing and I don't like that thing, and and if you don't like the acolyte, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Like the the reality is, is that Star Wars, in and of itself, is not just a vast universe full of many different characters, many different eras, but it is always always, always about the spiritual, spiritual journey of what it is to become who you are. And, 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 and that's, why I'm, that's why I am so, so overwhelmed and grateful to be here and beyond overwhelmed and grateful to be allowed as a filmmaker to experience what it is like to actually tactilely make something in this world. Um, that is beyond my wildest dreams, and I, I can't wait to show you guys more. I wish I could. <laughs> we are still shooting, so I can't. <laughs> we're, we're not done yet, so we don't have enough to show yet, but I, hopefully you will be able to see it soon. So too, and we can all, we can tell just how much it means to you, how, how deeply connected you are to the Star Wars galaxy. And I just want to say thank you so thank much you. for being here. Thank you for having it, me. It can be a, a bit overwhelming. It's a huge crowd, but it is a lovely crowd. Star Wars Celebration is like a big hug, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for stopping by our stage, bringing light and life to Star Wars, to live action, and there's much more to come from Star Wars Celebration Live. Don't you go anywhere.